I am meeting you here, I think exactly a year from the last time that I recorded a podcast in which I said I would be recording more podcasts. So you can see how that went. Um, I consider giving up on podcasts. I'm not a podcaster to begin with. I really don't like um, watching videos back of myself. I'm not really, yeah, not really that kind of person. But I figured I would give it another try just to tell you guys what's going on and I'm gonna try not to overthink it. I have my little buddy here with me. I don't know if I can move the camera to show you. Uh, we're in the nursery. She is uh, dumping all the books out of her bookshelf. The nursery is sheep themed. Uh, there's a butterfly. There's pictures of sheep here and there anyway. Um, and yeah, so I was just gonna take some time to show you uh, what I got going on, maybe a little update. And if I can figure out how to splice in some of the, some sheep videos from the past year or so, uh, I will do that then. So first of all, we have um, these little guys created quite a stir. Now, if you've been following us for a while, you may remember that, I think this is the third year I've been doing uh, like lots at a time for the kids. And whoa, this year I made mittens for everybody and I had to do eight at a time because I have four kids. So it's eight hands. And I say they created a stir because um, a couple of the posts I posted about them went, I would consider them to go viral. I don't know what's really considered going viral. There was like 400,000 people or views or something to me. That's viral to me. I'm pretty pleased if I get 200 uh, views on a post. And I really like that our group is small because I feel like everyone's nice and um, kind and you get less, I don't know, meanies. If you have a smaller group of people that actually want to be there. Um, but anyway, when I posted this, I gained three, uh, 300, 932 new followers, which is just wild to me because over the past few years, I'll get maybe like a hundred or 200 new followers in oh, a hey, year. Hi. Oh, hey, Ruben. Yeah. Um, That's and it. yeah. So that that's just wild to me. And I hope that the people that that started, I mean, actually want to hang around and and like anyway. Um so I these mittens, I think a lot of pe there's a lot of people that are like, "Why are you doing this?" And um yeah, that's a key. And the reason was just for fun. A lot of people were like, "Don't you know that's easier to do XYZ?" I'm like, "Yes, I do know that. It's just for sillies, just for fun." Um, and Evangeline's mittens are done and they, I didn't do thumbs and I did them like really big. So they, I, in the past I've made little teeny mittens with thumbs that are so cute, but they're so hard to get their thumbs in there. Um, I just made these big ones to just like pop over the end of her. Um, and I think those will go a lot better, but my goodness, it's the middle of winter. I better hurry up here. It's poor kids. They have their old small mittens and I got to weave in ends and I was going to try to crochet over the knots and if that didn't work, I've really been into needle felting over, um, like knots or problem areas. It's, I use that on, um, Ruben's Christmas stocking. I'm not sure what happened. Um, to me, it looked like someone had taken some scissors to the cuff of his stocking. Um, so I sewed around the hole, but it, it it looked really sloppy. So I said, I'm here. And I kind of needle felt it around it and it really did. I was happy with how with how it turned out. Um, but yeah, so that's been my one of my many current projects right now. My other goal this year was to release a pattern every month. Um, but so far that's actually gone good because I've released two patterns and one was a hat and mitten combo for the Valentine's box, which are almost gone. Um, those have been super fun. 
And I have an idea for the next one. It's going to go along with our next book in the book club. Um, and yeah, so I don't know if you can see my little basket here. There's these are little balls. So they, it each has their own individual ball. There's a good way to do this if you have a box that like canning jars come in. No, don't touch, don't touch, baby. Um, you can put each ball in an individual box and then turn the box as you go, I think clockwise, and it won't tangle. But what I've done instead is cut the yarn after every three rows like a crazy person instead of, uh, you know, doing it the right way. But it's been fun. I've had a lot of fun. I actually like taking it slow with this, but the kids need their mittens and I think everyone's dying to see how it turns out. So almost done. Ribbons, uh, maybe I'll finish those. Well, I know I'll finish them today. I only have two rows left. I'm doing these kind of cheater mitten tops. This is how my grandmother um, used to do them actually, where you would knit almost like to your ring, top of your ring finger, pointy finger, and then just knit two together all the way around, knit a row, knit two together all the way around, as opposed to doing the, the mitten top that's like, like a toe. I don't know if it's a cheater way. Maybe it's more, maybe that's what people do, but, um, it's, the sizing can be kind of tricky though, because I, I don't know, that looks a little short. Maybe not though. He'll, he'll grow into it for sure. Um, I have a couple other things to show you. Well, I mean, I have a year's worth of things to show you, but we're just, I just grabbed a, a few random things. These are Ruben's vegetables. I picked them up on my way, um, up the stairs because I absolutely love, they're probably pretty dirty too, because they actually play with them, which is just awesome. Makes my heart happy. Um, he's got a pear, he's got an orange. He's got an apple. I think the lettuce and the this like shallot onion thing are my favorite though. These were so fun to make. I crocheted these for Christmas and um, Evangeline walks around with her little basket and picks up the vegetables. Ruben does too. So cute. So much fun. Um, if I, um, I've shared the pattern before, but it was a free pattern on Ravelry and the woman's name was Eva something. I'm so bad about remembering pattern names. Or just, I guess, I don't know, bad with names, I guess. Also kind of bad with faces, so. Um, this is a design that I've had forever. And I actually love this sweater. I love the fit of it. I need to just be brave and publish the pattern because it's a great one. And it uses super, it goes super fast. It's actually pretty, I'm not a crop top person, even with stuff under it. I just, it doesn't look well with my shape, but I really like the sweater and, um, you can definitely make the body longer, of course. And yeah, I need to publish the pattern because um, I love it very much. It's very simple, but I think, you know, something to be said for simple. My, my problem, which I think I probably said this last year, I don't know. I don't remember when I finished this. I, I worry about sizing up and sizing down with sweaters. And I make free patterns too, but I still stress out about if the pattern is accurate and I yeah so that's really all I need to do with it is just figure out the smaller and bigger sizes um but that that's coming this year and so if we back up to Christmas way back when um I did get some goodies for Christmas Dave actually surprised me um I knew nothing about this, which is very um, impressive because I usually snoop on my <laughs> presents, but he got me an advent calendar. I don't know if you can read that. It says Onling. Um, oh no, I'm going to forget where it's from. It, it was some Nordic country. Does it say on here? I think it was Norway. Um, anyway, it was an advent calendar and you got a skein of yarn every week leading up to Christmas. And they also would email you a sock pattern to go with it. And so there's these two of these blue and two of these purples and which is just adorable. And this is made from, I think it's like wool. Yeah, 75% wool, non wash, and 25% recycled bottles, which is so neat. I don't know when I'll get around to actually making them, but um, it was very fun to open um, leading up to Christmas and 
I love the color. They can't, each of them came with like some luxury skincare product too, which um, my skincare routine is a splash of cold water to the face. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll figure out how to use the, the things I got, but yeah, so that was fun. I don't, think, I don't think it was that expensive either, which is nice. Um, and then I treated myself to something for Christmas. I picked this out and then I had Elsie wrap it for me and put it under the tree. Um, these are mini skeins and uh, I got them from Nikki Slip on Etsy. She is a Canadian. Um, yeah, so each of these, they're like folded together really, really fun, but they're, they're each a mini skein. They're meant to be like a gradient. I don't know when I'll get around to do anything with it, but I would love to make like maybe a blanket or a shawl. I love these colors. They're so bright and fun. Um, yeah, I, right now I'm kind of just enjoying hanging this big like square thing up on my yarn wall downstairs and just admiring it and, you know, giving a little pat every once in a while when I go by. <laughs> but yeah, that was my, that was my Christmas present from me to me. It's more like from you guys to me because you guys are paying all my yarn bills. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. And all my other bills too. Okay. I'm about to say something kind of controversial. But this, just a couple weeks ago, you know, after, I don't know if anyone else does this, but I have this urge to throw out all my belongings after Christmas. Um... And I was taking a good hard look at my knitting needles because the previous system I put in place failed. Um, I just had too many needles. And I got something else. I should have brought it up with me, which is kind of nice. It, what it is, is it's a, it's an art case and it's like soft. It's almost like a, like a zip, like not a briefcase, but like a zippered bag. And then on the inside, there's um, elastic slots for like if you were putting in like artist pencils or paintbrushes. So that is nice and I think it's going to work. However, as I was sorting through my needles, which were in a big bin, I realized that like 90% of my needles were trash <laughs> because they either were needles from people that... Just having a lot of fun with the scallop shell over there. Um... Needles from people that like, oh, my grandma passed away and she left these needles. Like, do you want them? I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. I'll find something to do them. I had a lot of those fr from like, since I was like eight. So, so some of those were very old. And then I was teaching a sock class and I found a, um, a really inexpensive listing for double pointed needles. You get what you pay for. And it was cheaper to buy like 10 whole sets zero to I think 12 of double pointed needles and just steal the size sixes out of those from my class and then I kept all the other needles but what I've known for a while and I finally said this is not right needles aren't that expensive is those needles were very very inconsistent so some of them fit like just barely on the measure and then some of them there was like a lot of room and you could tell that it made the stitches uneven so I threw them out and Dave was like, surely you should donate them to somebody. But I don't, I don't want to donate needles that are going to make, you know, subpar thing for somebody. So I, I threw out all the ragtag needles. I did, I, I have some chow goose. I think that's how you say it. Probably not. Um, that I've been slowly collecting. I've talked about this before. I got the interchangeables and I just didn't like them. I like them to have a longer, um, like needle part. Um, so I've been collecting the fixed ones as I need them. I obviously didn't throw those out. Um, but I, I just started with some Knit Picks needles and they're very heavy, which I kind of like because I use them for heavy, with heavy yarn. But if I was using lace weight, doing a lot of lace weight yarn, the heaviness probably would not be awesome. But so I just started out, got myself some new needles. I cast on something last night. Well, I'm casting on, I'll, I'll get to that in a second if I can remember. Um, and then last Christmas, my friend Jocelyn, uh, she lives in Florida now, but we grew up together. She spoiled me rotten. She got, um, another word I'm, I'm going to mispronounce, like, Leica needles for me, circulars. 
and I really like them. I think they're, I think they're called like driftwood or something. And <coughs> as you can see, I've been using them. Um, but they have a good long needle part on them, which I really like because I like to be able to get a purchase with my pinky when I'm knitting. And, um, yeah, you do need to use the key or they will unwind, but these have been great. So these have solved almost all my circular needle problems or needs, I guess. And who knows, maybe I'll add to this collection if I need to, but I might not need to because there's a lot of sizes in here. So thank you, Jocelyn. I put them to good use. And <laughs> she's trying to climb the bookshelf now. Whoa, watch out, you. She's actually today, she's 14 months, which is crazy. I'm still trying to process that she's a year and now she's speeding on to the next milestone. But it's been, it's been so fun. I've loved this age between between one and two. I feel like, well, she's already gotten into the mischief phase, but it's like not a lot of discipline, but um, a lot of fun. <laughs> she's having a tea party. Oh, she stole the onion over there. <clears throat> Anyway, see if I can see if I can show you Banjo Bell. Hey, can you say hi? Oh, is there a girl under that hair? Silly, silly. All right. Um, I printed out this pattern. I don't know if I'll when I'll get to it, but isn't that fun? Lobster sweater. I've seen some people making them. Love it. My Whitney Terrell Terrell Adventure Brand Designs. I like to print out patterns. For some reason, it makes me feel like I've started them. I do wanna, I wanna finish the Sylvie coat this year too. Um, what a super fail that's been. <clears throat> if you didn't know, I started one. I started a knit along starting one. It was going well, I got like halfway up the body and the sleeves done. And then I accidentally sold the lot of Atlantic Sheep's Gray that I had set aside. I did set aside enough. <coughs> But, um, someone was like, oh, do you have any in this lot? And I was like, no, I don't. And I said, oh, wait, what's this? Yeah, I do. There's some right here. And that was mine. And the next lot was really different. Some colors you'd never know, but this one was really obvious. Um, and I didn't, it was too obvious to even fade it into the next lot. Okay. <coughs> Where's this coughing coming from? <laughs> um... This is going to be, so we're going to start a new book. Um, I haven't finished it, but I think it's going to be good. I get so nervous that I'm going to pick a book that's a dud for this book club, but um, it's called Cows Are Out, and it's about a family with a dairy farm in Thorndike, or near Thorndike, somewhere in Maine, and it's, it's like a memoir. I think it would be, it's going to be like kind of relaxing and, and fun, and I guess... I guess this is not a spoiler because it says it on the back of the book. So like her, it's about her and her husband with this dairy farm and, and raising their kids and stuff. And then they actually got divorced and have been divorced for 19 years. And then the ex-husband read the memoir and I guess contacted her and they kind of like fell back in love again and got remarried. So I thought that was sweet. I don't know. Maybe I actually have to read the book to know if it is, but <laughs> it seems sweet. So I, I wanted to pick out a pattern to go with it and I, I wanted something that was already designed. I found um, this, it's called Cow Road. It says, it's from Isle Yarns, which I looked everywhere on the internet to find this because I was really intrigued. Hi. Um, oh, because it was like part Swaledale. I was like, mm, cause Swaledales are really close to Scotch Blackface. <clears throat> uh, but I couldn't find it. Anyway, this pattern is free online. Uh, it was a little hard to track down. It's by Claire Ward. And I think we're gonna do, I think we're gonna do it along with a book, just as optional. It's gonna take Regal. <coughs> I got some cute little stitch markers to go along with it. So I'll do, I don't know, some kind of special. And um, I chose light brown to do mine and it uses the old Norwegian or German twisted cast on, which I don't know. I've done it before, but it's been a long time. So I had to refresh my memory and it's going pretty slow, but 
I'm slowly picking up speed here. Um, I'm a big long tail cast on fan. So we'll see. This is supposedly supposed to be stretchier. I don't know if it's much stretch stretchier than the long, the long tail, but maybe maybe because I'm a little more awkward with it, it's it's tighter than it should be. But anyway, um, so I'm gonna work on that today just to make sure that the yarn will actually work out for the hat. But I think it should, especially because it's it's offered in three sizes. Which is nice. <clears throat> I feel like you don't typically see that for a hat pattern. So that's what I've been up to. Um, sheep are pretty much hunkered down for the winter. <laughs> Doing good. Um, it's just, you know, like the regular feeding and whatnot. Getting excited for spring lamb season, which is still a while back. Um, I do have birthday plans, so every year I try to do something. Um, the second half of February, I usually have some kind of big sale. I have a special hand paint that's in the works for you all. And giveaways, lots of giveaways. So that is coming. That's why I haven't chosen the color of the month for February yet. I just held over the peacock because I think there's going to be some kind of big sale. So I love doing sales. My husband reminds me that I actually have to do math like to see if I'm netting any money after I get done selling things. It's such a drag. But anyway, um, yeah, I think that's all. I will try to rustle up some sheep videos for you all, which may or may not appear after these messages. But anyway, thank you. Um, the two or three of you who are still out there holding out hope that one day I would <laughs> get and do a podcast and not leave you hanging. Thank you for believing me. I appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time, which hopefully won't be a year from now. Bye-bye. <laughs>